name of our show. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to The Large Glass. My name's Todd. I'm Terry. And this is the show where we bring you a new artist live to talk to. How's everybody doing tonight? Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, I'm noticing people are in the chat already. Joseph yep, Barbacci is here up. with his TNT. Yes. Good to see you. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hi, Audrey. Hi, John. John, I got to tell you, I'm glad you're here. Um, ooh, 63 is saying, ooh, good, good volume. volume. Excellent. I was kind of, 63, I got to tell you, I was a little nervous about that, so I worked on that. Yes. John, I know you sent me that stuff about the Dolly uh, AI system, which I didn't get, I, I looked at everything you did, I actually went in and scrutinized some of the similarities in that. I actually would love to get a sidebar show where we talk about that stuff. I really think that's an interesting topic, and I want to get going with that, so... Um, for what it's worth. Yeah, there's a couple more comments, not to cut you off there, but Alan Wexler is here. He says, hi all, looking forward to seeing Jack's work. All right, nice to see you, Alan. Thanks for coming. Memory Vessel's here, DFT. <laughs> She's like. <laughs> trying to think of what the F could stand for. We're so gonna leave we'll that one alone. That go. <laughs> and I hate username Glenn 67. Laver it's Glenn Lavertu. Says, hello, viva la Jack. Viva la Jack. Yes. Uh, John Park says, sounds good. Yeah, let's definitely do that. Is Jess with us tonight, John, or is she working again? Because if she is, I'm going to start to get a little insecure. <laughs> Just going to put that out there. Um, oh, Susan Michael's Susan here. Susan Michael's here. Hello. Su yeah, Susan Michael is going to be our uh, guest in two weeks. Yes, she'll be episode 105. 105. I can't wait. Yeah. Oh, she's log Jess is logging in. Good. Yeah. We got a good crowd Great. starting up. Super. Um, we got some things to talk about. Why don't we pour our drinks? Let's. All right. So, um, so, talk about that. Well, our guest artist tonight preferred a vodka mixer, I guess. Yeah. So Todd's going to mix it up. Well, I'm going to do vodka tonic. Yeah. I have a feeling Jack is having vodka and it looks like grapefruit, but I could be wrong. Um, I, you know, I think a vodka grapefruit is actually really good because it's a good excuse to get your vitamin C. There you go. Right? I yeah. Think if anybody ever says, you know, you probably shouldn't have vodka and grapefruit in the morning, I yeah. say, oh, well, I don't do that. But yeah. it's a good source of vitamin C. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why do I always embarrass myself on this I show? I don't know. <laughs> All right. So anyway. Yeah, Joseph Barbacci is drinking a Pinot Grigio. Jess Park says she's here. Great. Memory Vessel says, no typo, see above. Yeah, no, I know. I saw gotcha. it. I just wanted to focus on the one that's at TFT. How about that for some ASMR? Yes. That sounds good. And then, Terry, what are you drinking? So, Pumpkin Audrey often treats me right, and she gets me these cute little vodka mixers. So this has vodka in it. It also has... Peach, cucumber, tea, and thyme. So it's got a couple different things. It's a sparkling vodka beverage. So a little summary. It's not bad. Kind of girly, it's... which I love. Yep, and Pumpkin Audrey, speaking of which, she's drinking gin and tonic. G and T for T and T. All right, there we go. Well, this is episode 100 and... I jumped in. It's three. <laughs> 103. <laughs> I'm like, where are I'm like, we? Like, do you know where we are? Uh, we can't wait to talk to Jack Solomon tonight. Yes. So, cheers to you. Cheers. And uh, we're going to have him on in a few minutes. Yeah. But um, let us know what you're drinking in the chat. Yeah. All right. Tasty. Yeah. If you're floating around in the pool, I highly recommend this. This is a yummy float away. I'd like to float around in a pool. And a noodle kind of drink. Yeah. Yeah. One thing we don't have is a pool. So hmm. if you'd like to support our show, send us one in the ground swimming pool. Yes. Preferably under 40 feet yes. in length, uh, complete with pool robot Those little filtration pools, system. <laughs> they're awesome. Let's see. 63 says going cheap. Uh, no. I, Actually, I, I like those. Those Boda boxes are They're yummy. Good. Yeah. yeah. No, 63, we, we respect that. Yes. Yes. Um, 63 says you've got a stream. We do. Yes, we do. Um, okay. So Memory Vessel says and a pool boy. Go on. 
And you, a pool boy? And a pool boy. To go with the pool. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We absolutely need that. I'm I sorry, thought you were so lost imagining the pool boy. I'm like, we don't have a pool boy, boy yet. <laughs> All right, let's catch up on some of the news stuff yes, so we can get that. to Jack. I want to talk about some things. Um, what do you got for us? Well, there's a couple things, but they're not really related to the visual arts. They're more auditory. Yeah. So this is the 45th anniversary of Elvis's death. I think of that because I'm a huge Elvis fan. I went to Graceland. I think about it every year, so R.I.P. Elvis. Okay. But got okay. that one done. Um, I would love to talk about the other item, yeah. one of the other items yes. on the list, and that is um, two of our favorite musicians of late, of, yes. of recent acquisition, They're I should say. They're a duo. They're a duo. Uh, J.D. Beck and Domi. Yes. Uh, we saw them at the Blue Note a couple months back. We raved about that show. They have finally dropped their album, Not Tight. They have signed on with Blue Note Records. They're the ones who put the album out, and it actually was released today. Right. So it's on Amazon Music, Spotify, lots of other kinds of music things. They have collaborations with Herbie Hancock, Snoop Dogg. They're amazing. We are so excited. That's going to be on my car lot, radio for a lot of cool guests on the album. And Glenn, I know you're out there listening. You can pre-order the limited edition pink vinyl uh, of that. It's not going to ship until July of 2023, but it's only 25 bucks. I have a feeling that's going to be, you know, a really, really fantastically produced album. So go Google J.D. Beck and Domi. Uh, go to their website and go to shop, and you can pick that album up. We are in no way, shape, or form sponsored by them, but, no, but we, we would love, love to be their friends. Yes. <laughs> They're a little yes. young. To they be are friends. a little young. I think he's 18 or 16. Is he mm -mm. still underage? No, he's 18. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, they're they're just superb. So, anyway, that they're was wonderful. that was that. What else we got? Yeah. So, we had an art contest last week. Yes, we did. And we went with the dog days of summer theme, and we posted a Van Eyck and Carol Pelagian guessed correctly. Yes, Carol Pelagian, who is A, a fantastic artist, B, a fantastic personality, and C, coming on this show in September. We're looking forward to having her. Mm -hmm. um, we're thrilled to have her yeah. on. She's going to be the show right before our two-year anniversary. Correct. And speaking of our two-year anniversary, yes. would you like to... Tell our viewers about some of our plans. Break the disappointing news. <laughs> the disappoint. Here it comes, people. Yes. So we're going to take a little bit of a break. Not for long. We want to revamp a couple of things. We want to get new intro and outro. We're breaking up with you. We're not breaking up with you, but we're going to come back better than ever. And we're thinking like a one to two week break so we can kind of get our acts together okay it's likely going to be a two-week break and here's why we uh number one we finally need to establish our not-for-profit status so mm -hmm. that we can actually begin to do some grant writing and make the show what we want to make it Two, a lot of our social media stuff really needs attention so in that time frame we're going to be looking to bring on two interns so if you know of anybody who's still in college wants to be an intern for this show, this tiny little show, when it explodes and becomes something fantastic. But it's already fantastic. It is already fantastic. But when it becomes big, they could say that they were an intern when the show first started out. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be looking for interns. We're going to be looking to revamp the socials, get our not-for-profit status, and a host of other things. We're going to be introducing some new content, and mm -hmm. we need time to put all that together. We're tired. We love doing this show, but it's a lot of, it's been, yeah, it's been constant. Haven't missed a single week. Haven't missed a single week in two years. We won't be able to say that anymore, but we hope that we'll be doing this for a much brighter year number three. Mm -hmm. So for what it's worth. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. Anything else? Um, I think that's about it. That's, uh, there's a birthday today. A lot of Karachis in the art world. Agostino Karachi, it's his birthday today. And I got to tell you, before we have our show next week, because we don't want you to miss it, it will be Pumpkin Audrey's birthday. Why, uh, yes. So she's we got to say happy birthday. birthday to Pumpkin Audrey, one of our longtime viewers, which, you know, she's never missed. She's loyal. She's loyal. She has missed a show, but we're not going to hold that against her. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Cheers. Okay. Right. So, anyway. It's time for us to get on to introducing. It's time for Todd to plug some support. That's right. <laughs> I let you do that. 
Okay. He's better at asking than I am. Uh, I gotta tell you, so if you're here for the first time and you're about to watch our interview with Jack Solomon, which we're very excited about, what you should know is that whole thing about us taking a break comes on the heels of us working tirelessly every week for two years to bring you another live artist. Now you probably, if you're new here and you don't follow yet, you might not know that, but we've really interviewed some amazing people. Last week we had Dante K. Hayes, who, I don't know about you, but he blew my mind. And I know that some of the people, we've gotten a lot of feedback about that show and they said that show was one of the best we've ever had. Um, we've interviewed people like Matthew Collings and Jane Fine and and, and Pam Doherty Glick and, and Maureen Doherty yep. and just some people that are Alan really Wexler. Alan Wexler. Alan Wexler. Yeah. We got to have Glenn him. Lavertu. Glenn Lavertu. Glenn yeah. Lavertu. Some of the people that are right here in our chat as yeah. well. Um, so we've worked very hard at that. If you're new here and you have not followed, if you're on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're on Twitch, please follow. If you're on Facebook, please like the page and consider also supporting us from your wallet, which we would love. If, if you want to do that, you can head over to our website, which is thelargeglass.org, and there's a support tab there. Click on it, put us in your will, whatever you want to do. Um, it would be very helpful. So there's the support. Are you happy with that? I am very happy with that. Thank Good. you. Good. Yeah. Now can we introduce Jack? We can, and I'm going to uh, just give... Um, a citation. I uh, gleaned most of this introduction from his recent show, uh, which was over at the Carrie Chen Gallery in Massachusetts. Um, he's joining us tonight from his upstate home, uh, upstate New York, that Hudson, is. Hudson, New York, to be exact. Hudson, to be specific. I was trying to protect his whereabouts in case anybody was going to come and find him, but <laughs> I guess we're good. So that's where he's at, and that's where he's joining us from. Fantastic. So, yeah, so D. Jack Solomon was awarded a bachelor's degree in art from San Diego University and a master's degree in painting from San Francisco State University. Uh, he also attended the University of California at Los Angeles, Arts Center Los Angeles, and Mills College in Oakland, California. His teaching career began in 1967 at Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond, Virginia, at Richmond, Virginia. He subsequently moved to New York in 1974 and has taught at a variety of institutions, including the Brooklyn Museum School of Art, New York State University of Purchase, uh, New York State University at New Paltz as well. He taught drawing at the Parsons School of Design in New York City for 28 years and retired back in 2011. He has also been invited as a visiting artist and lecturer at numerous universities in the Midwest and on the East Coast, including an artist in residence at Altos de Chavon in the Dominican Republic. Uh, Mr. Solomon is a painter who has exhibited widely in one person and group exhibitions throughout the United States, and he has received many artist grants, including the National Endowment for the Arts Individual Artists Grant for Painting and the Paula Krasner Foundation Grant. He's represented in numerous public, corporate, and private collections throughout the United States, Europe, and Southeast Asia. For all of you joining us tonight, please give a warm welcome to D. Jack Solomon. Hi, Jack. How's it going? Well, good. Good. Nice I'm to ready see to go. Oh, I'm glad you're ready to go. go. Good to see you. And thanks for coming on the show. Yes. Well, thanks for asking me. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, after that long, long introduction and Terry reading all of that wonderful stuff about you, she is the one that usually starts us off with our first question. But before we get to that, thanks for recommending the vodka drink tonight. Cheers to you. Um, we're excited to have you. Is that, in fact, the vodka grapefruit that you have? Yes, it is. Okay, yes, it is. good, because I spied it when we were talking earlier, but I wasn't Ooh, sure if that's color. what you had. So cheers. cheers. Thanks again for coming on. So Terry's going to start us off. Yep. So usually we start off with a very basic question. Um, Jack, can you tell us a little bit about the art that you make? Well, I, t I wanted to really start with in the, uh, well, I started painting in, in early 60s. I was influenced by many and, and uh, did a lot of different things. But there was times in my life where there was major changes in my work. And one was around 2002. In 2002, I started a series of collages uh, that used a, 
a funny paper image in it. Uh, I had a friend that was doing some renovation on a restaurant and he uh, wrapped around the water pipes were uh, newspapers from the 1940s, 45, I think a little after the war, but including in those uh, newspapers were uh, some fun, uh, uh, you know, funny papers. So I, I started uh, using those as collages. I did about 40 something of these collages and what you see now on the screen was one of them. And uh, they were all painted. Every, every part of it was painted, but I stayed more in a value structure. Uh, and, uh, and, and just uh, took different uh, images that you can see there. Uh, always included one of the f funny paper characters, but I also sort of appropriated images from other artists, uh, especially Miro and uh, Picasso and Leger. And I would just take, as I made my collage, I would uh, take images from them. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was very important in the sense that after I have done quite a few of the, the collages, I, re I wanted to make uh, paintings out of them. And I came up with the idea to, uh, this is actually the first painting from that. And what I did is I made the collage as I did before but I scanned the collage and then projected it. It was a sketch master. It's like an overhead projector. Hmm. But it was just, I would do a quick drawing and tighten up the drawing and still try to uh, uh, approach it in a, a sort of value structure, dark light structure, and then uh, contrast that with little more high key uh, colors. Gotcha, gotcha. And the importance of this, I'll just throw this out, is that process to, to uh, get imagery for paintings stayed with me for over like 15, 16 years. All the paintings I did after this were, um, started with a small collage that was projected and the collage themselves always remained uh, like a value structure. They were all dark, dark light. And then, uh, and here's one where I kept, kept this uh, value structure and then introduced uh, a little colored just as contrast. Gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. Um, so I'm curious about a number of things that I wanna get to. And another thing I forgot to mention to all of you in the chat is if you have questions or comments about Jack's work, please throw them in there. And we noticed that over on YouTube, Pamela says, looking good, dad. Um, so that's my daughter. That's what I figured. I'm, you know, unless someone else is calling you dad. But, uh... <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so I was, you know, I've always known your work. I've known your work for quite some time. And but, you know, of course, in the weeks leading up to a show with an artist, we start to really pour over the work and start to really look at it. And, and, I'm, and I'm starting to sort of notice some of the references. And I was curious about some of the funny paper references that sort of led you into it. You know, occasionally when I look at some of these works, I'll recognize a reference like Tintin, for example, in this one. Mm -hmm. um, but other times. I don't. And I feel like that's fine. I feel like the, the notion of recognizing who a person necessarily is or what comic they might have related to isn't necessarily relevant in my looking at the work. When you look at these or when you make these and you're thinking about the elements you're adding, 
how are you thinking about some of those characters or some of those comics and how they might have related to what you knew back then, if at all? Well, that's a nice question because actually I'm very familiar with all these uh, characters from uh, the, those 40s. And, uh, but I never thought of it that way. What one thing that I did do, there's not, this is not really about, there's always sort of a implication of a, a association or a, um, a narrative between the, the, the images of the figure images. Uh, I sort of set it up that way. Uh, still important, very important to me was the structure of it. And, and I try to, in these early paintings, I try to still keep that very strong value structure hmm. and, and, uh, and contrast that dark light with a few areas of a little more intense uh, color. And this is going to seem, I just realized, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm asking no, a lot ahead. of questions, but I'm starting to realize some things now. And I remember, now this might have been different in the 40s, but were comics in the funny papers in the 40s in color, or were they all black and white? Oh, no, no, no. No, they were color. They were yeah. color. Okay, so yeah. then there was a kind of interesting pop of color in the paper, in a black and white, in a black and white paper, which right. was kind of a surprise. And I remember on Sunday mornings looking at the funny pages, right, um, and and kind of thinking, "Wow, this is kind of a really cool thing." Not that there wasn't color when we were young like that, but still, um, there's a couple of comments popping in here. Joseph Barbaccio wants to know what the date is on this piece when you did it. This one is a two. Well, these are two thousand. This is when I started, so. It probably about 2002 to, um, I mean, with the uh, collages, these are probably about 2004. Okay. Somewhere in there. I'm guessing on that, but I know that I did mm -hmm. quite a few of the uh, painted collages prior to uh, starting to do the collage and projecting the collage and, and doing a, a drawing of the that on on the canvas gotcha gotcha so yeah there's some other things popping in i'm going to move through some of these images but um uh, one of our viewers uh bill mackholt says this work is great and it doesn't make me compare it to any other artist particularly which is good there is a great layered complexity um jim osman is here and he says it seems like jack's choice of comic characters works somewhat like how picasso and brock has a range of subjects in their analytical cubics work, cubist works, boats, rope, G clefts, et cetera, which mm -hmm. is actually, yeah, I kind of think of it like that, right? Mm -hmm. In the way those things all kind of come together to, to form those cubist compositions. Mm -hmm. uh, and Alan Wexler's curious about the size on these. I think they're about 19 by 30. This one's like 19 by 36 approximately, right? Right. They, they weren't too, too large, but there were some that, uh, we're like five, five feet. Um, no, I never got really large. I did one fairly large one. Okay. Now, I don't know if you have any images of these, but uh, I was asked to do a installation piece uh, in Copic. Uh, Stanley Cohen uh, asked me to do a insulation where I took an a early uh, collage painted collage and and did a, a a larger triptych of that which was uh let's see uh six by nine and then they printed that on mylar and put the my and then uh uh, put that on aluminum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, on his uh, Do we have that? his residence so. um, in Copac, uh, he has his like a art board, 
like a billboard, gotcha. but an art mm -hmm. board. Yeah, I saw that in the catalog. We actually don't have that one in the show, um, mm -hmm. but um, I can add a link to that to the YouTube mm -hmm. video tomorrow. We, can. we can put that in there and we can throw a little card up above us here to link to that. Um, yeah, so larger in these probably plays different. You're going to ask something. I hear you gearing up for something. Um, well, because you said that you had worked from the collage pieces. The collage pieces, I'm assuming, are just regular sketchbook sizes, they're, and then you transfer yeah, them. Yeah, they're, they're very small. Mm -hmm. In fact, they had to be a certain size to fit into the Project. sketch master. Okay. They all had to be, but they were, you know, uh, to the canvas itself then the, they had to uh, uh, i did it so it would fit into the canvas mm. itself now one of the things i should mention here is up until this point point uh there wasn't that my work didn't wasn't that complex the collage allowed me to just put a lot of, a lot of stuff in there and uh, I, I love doing that. You know, I love to contrast elements, three-dimensional references, and, uh, and which set up sort of a spatial referencing that was a little different from any of my prior work uh, before these. And... Uh, and then sometimes I try to contrast that by setting up a, if you look at it, you know, as a, a, a gestalt, mm -hmm. a whole, um, then the, there's an ambiguity about the space because the, there was like this red ground underneath all of it, which would, uh, you could, it flattens up the spatial part flattens up on top of it right right that was that was uh an interest that i had at this point and this would be a good example of that yeah there's some things about this one that i really love in terms of that spatial interplay um because you do have that colored ground that sits at the very very edge and perimeter which suggests yes. a backspace but then even as we get into some of the more flattened graphical elements, the way you layer and compose things suggests these other dimensional spaces that are really fascinating and have almost, you know, a, a physical dimensionality to them. Like that checkerboard in the center that sits by that swirl feels like it sits back in space. The gentleman and the, the comic gentleman at the bottom, he has his own window of space. They're mm -hmm. like all these little vignettes that mm -hmm. sort of, have their own almost boxes that they're contained in. Well, that that was uh, uh, something I was interested in, in doing. I try to keep the color when I got into this, where I would modulate the color, uh, keep it a harmonious kind of color scheme, and then set up the contrast by imageries or shapes or just anything that i could uh could could use that way right right and uh, so when you saw it as a whole it seemed to all fit and work uh, but then when you saw that individually in its uh own space then there was some uh, differences, right. I mean, you, am, ambiguity to it. And I really wanted to play off that. Gotcha. Uh, one of our viewers, John Parks, says the interplay of the black and gray elements balanced with the color is very pleasing and rhythmical. There is also a sense of time travel here that provides a different sort of mental motion. Images of the past, some hints of art deco, but clearly a modern sensibility. Love it. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, let's see, uh, Joseph Barbaccia asks, how well do younger people react to the comic figures of the thirties and forties, which I was wondering about that too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder about it too. Uh, you know, they would respond on, on a different level, I think, not on a, uh, 
you know, artistic level, they just respond to the imagery itself. Uh, I really haven't had that much feedback on it, but I think about it. I think about that, that it should appeal to, you know, younger kids too, if they uh, were into that. And, and speaking of younger kids, and I'm going to jump over a couple comments here to get to that, but on YouTube, we've got PL who says, Jack, love you, Grandpa. Your paintings look awesome. Can't wait to see you. It's kind of <laughs> kind of awesome. Well, I, love I, have, I not only have grandkids, but I have great grandkids looking at this. Watch. Oh, wow. Oh, that's, that's great. That's fantastic. I love that. Hey, I'm an old guy. Hey, you, come on. You look great, man. Uh, Mars Solis is here. Hi, Mars. Um, I love these so distinct. Uh, so you're getting a lot of good love here. Um, I had a couple more questions, but did you, did my, can I yeah, jump in? Ahead. Is that okay? Yeah. Do you mind? Um, so in terms of, and now I forget my questions. I'm going to have to sort of retool myself here. So again, we're still functioning sort of in the early 2000s. We're in 2004 now. We're in 2005. Um, and we're just kind of getting a feel for how you moved from the collage into these. Um, and I've got to think about it. So let's look oh, at a couple more of these. Yeah. I lost my train of thought completely. Well, my train of thought is going, these are very different. I mean, we can see some connections to some of your newer works and the pieces that were at your most recent show. Um, but I'm curious to see how you jumped from this this body of work into the one that was recently exhibited. Like I see some connection with the use of line and color and all of that, but I'm, I'm curious about how that, that happened. Yeah, for sure. And I think we've got a bunch of different work we can look at to not necessarily go straight to the newest sure. work. And we can kind of, what do you think, Jack? Where do you want to go from here? Can we look it, at- It doesn't matter. Maybe a little more of this because it did take different uh, new series Mm -hmm. where I got rid of the uh, funny paper image and went more just abstract. The process uh, remained the same. Uh, the uh, color got a little more involved. And, uh, but within the uh, uh, making that change, uh, there was a thread that even be, began way back into VCU Richmond days mm -hmm. and had to do with the uh, doing the subtle co color modulation. And that was that the uh, uh, I work very slow. I just move within a quarter of an inch at a time because I'm out, I'm mixing, you know, each step and this is acrylic. So it's not blended like oil. It's just that the value and, and the color change are so close that you, you don't see really see a, a line between it. Mm -hmm. It moves very slowly. Now in these early dark light, then it just was within the gray range. There's no black in any any of this, so I work from a chromatic dark, and as I tint out or add color to, you know, it just uh, whatever color that I'm going toward. The later paintings uh, show this a lot uh, better than these. Uh, these stay within that dark light, but there's no black in there. That's all chromatic. Gotcha. Uh, Grays. I remember one of the things I was going to ask you about these, and it comes from the notion of designing a comic. And since comics are obviously a central part of some of the inspiration for this, I'm interested in, in something in that respect. So what I love is you're bringing a lot of these characters out of the, uh, the typical box, the panel that the comic is sort of designed around. Now, I noticed that this wasn't a big aspect of Sunday comics in their day, but it became a big part of comic design as comics evolved and grew. But the panel itself, that rectangle that these characters lived in,
became something that was part of the rhythm and flow of how a comic was read. Mm. Now, in the 40s, this might not have been a thing because typically you had like three panels. They were all exactly the same size. And maybe slowly over time, as we moved into the 60s and 70s, that might have changed. In your work, when you're sort of trying to balance these compositions and create these rhythms and spaces, you're doing that with these and kind of putting them in that space before that was ever kind of even conceived of, which is kind of interesting to me. Did you ever think about that? Or is that something that plays in? Mm, no, not really, because my focus and the objective of my paintings was still about structure. Yeah. And uh, and these just, the emphasis really were was on a, a strong dark light structure. Mm -hmm and then contrasted by uh, areas of uh, more intense or uh, high-keyed color. Gotcha, gotcha. And um, that changes. That changes as uh, we get into uh, uh, the later work. Right, right. Still that with, right. with the collage reference, uh, though. Gotcha. Gotcha. JDE356, by the way, thanks for the follow earlier. We really appreciate that. And welcome to the show. Mm. Uh, if you have anything to ask Jack or comment on, throw it in the comments. And yeah. speaking of the comments, which we've gotten a lot of, uh, Jordan says, hi, Grandpa. So we want to make sure we recognize that, first of all. Uh, mm. Let's see. Bill Mackholt is asking if there were ever, are there any political social aspects to these early works? Not at all. None at all. Gotcha. No, I wasn't really interested in that politics or the only thing, as I mentioned prior, was that that I did uh, position maybe some of the images so there was some uh, dialogue in some way between, you know, uh, figure looking at another figure or the figure looking down at you know so there 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 could be uh, a story there mm -hmm. in some way right yeah. it wasn't just an isolated figure by itself it always had some interchange with other uh, references yeah. uh, within the uh, composition yeah, I think the um, the use of advertising in some of them too, not so much these that we are seeing now, but we see some typography coming up like camel and references to like the peanut man and like things in pop culture references. It's almost like a free association of thought sometimes because you have um, older schools of art that we can see in the artwork like Bauhaus and, and suprematism, suprematism and stuff like that but then you've got all these really modern concepts from mid-century America with the comics and the and the advertising so it's this really interesting exchange and sometimes I'm wondering like when I was looking at your work I'm like wow I wonder what he's getting at here is he is he making a commentary on American life or or is it stream of consciousness where he's or pulling is it these just things stream together? of consciousness like why did he select this particular image versus you know like why the peanut man why so I was trying to really kind of put it together like a, a puzzle and find out what some of the meanings were but so, and, and I want to jump in before you answer that Jack and say that we also recognize the fact that sometimes that's not sometimes it's not that's there. a mistake yeah. right like it's just like let's let's draw from these things and and utilize them without necessarily Necessarily, always having to assign the narrative, and could, we've had this conversation. But what do you think? Well, I know that would come up, but uh, as people you know, try to analyze the work, but right. it never was an interest. Uh, as I said before, I wasn't trying to make any kind of uh, really statement with these. They all, everything that I've probably ever done as I move into different series of work is still about uh, maybe just as a, a challenge, right? you know, to work with that kind of imagery and still come up with a, a, a solution 
a structural solution to the work itself. And that is a great, and you know what I love about that answer? We have a lot of comments popping in right now, but what I love about that answer is the challenge of working with this material. And, and especially for, okay, so yeah, from the standpoint of structure, of course, but also from the standpoint of, you were kind of bucking a lot of trends in that you were using a lot of crossover between an illustration kind of world and a fine art world and merging them together. And it, that is a challenge alone it must have been one that you faced or at least dealt with in terms of criticism before, I would imagine, right? Well, if I did, I <laughs> I didn't know know about it. Well, good, good, because that, that shows me that, that, or at least that sort of says you nailed it. Yeah. Right? Because it's a hard thing to do. Um, let me jump into some comments real quick. There's a couple of fun questions here. J uh, Pumpkin Audrey says, Jack, who was your favorite comic character? Well, I, you know, again, I just took the, the comic characters that, that were in those funny papers. Right. But maybe not and from the standpoint of your paintings, but did you have a favorite one? I, I really don't think I did. I mean, I, you know, I loved a lot of those early Cats and Jammer kids and the and little iodine and, you know, because I grew up with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, I look forward to, to look at the, look at the comics right uh, mm -hmm. I, in my youth. But I'm not sure that I just, you know, really had a, a favorite. Gotcha. And uh, Jim... this was... When you talk about scale, this was probably the largest uh, funny paper painting that I did. And it's not, comparatively speaking, it's not really, you have the scale. I, yeah, we do. It's a 50 by 60. Yeah. So I think that was the, the I was in a show here in Hudson and uh, the uh, gallery owner had built this wall and he wanted me to do a painting that was a freestanding wall. And he wanted me to do a painting to, that fit that wall. Hmm. So that's uh, why I did this, this larger painting. Right. Um, Jim Osmond says, talking about structure, what kind of music does Jack listen to and maybe is informed by? Well, <laughs> Uh, we just well in the beginning, uh, I shared a a, a a a studio when we were in uh, across the river in Greene County, and uh, we listened. We kind of shared the music, so we listened to all sorts of music, nothing uh, jazz, even opera, hmm. <laughs> and. Uh, 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 did, had a lot of uh, Latin music, and uh, so I don't know if that really. We just like to like music. Both of us like music to work with, so that uh, that that was always on. In the both we of us, in the both music. of us, who are you referencing? My wife. That's what Jeanette I thought. Fitz. Jeanette Fence. Got it. I just wanted to make sure we got that in there. Another another painter. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, and we got along, all right. <laughs> you got along okay? Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that's important. Yeah, that's important. Uh Bill Mackhold says, sure, any work can be read in many ways, whether intended or not. That's going back to the this earlier thing true. I was saying. Yes. Uh and he also says, Thanks for the honesty so contrary to most grad programs over the last 20 years. And I love that about talking about your work is we're like, we're trying to nail down some kind of analysis. And it's like, no, that wasn't there. And and that's great. You know, I love that these are really about sort of this, this raw approach to making paintings that has a couple of structural and formal elements in mind. And you've got a, a set of imagery that you draw upon to build those with that you find to be challenging. And I think that's just, that's it, right? And I love that about it. Well, you know, uh, in, in my show that was in Great Barrington, uh, I gave a talk about the work and it came up that, uh, that music played some part uh, in my work. And uh, 
but it really had to do with that I always intrigued about how different artists use their components, their language to put together things. Everything becomes a component part that you assemble in a way to, to make a statement. You know, it doesn't matter if it's music, if it's, if it's a writer or if it's a, you know, a dancer, there's something that goes on that, that you see the, the parts, but it always, there's a conclusion to it. Painting, it's a visual, you know, an, an opera will go on for, you know, two, two and a half hours, but there there's moments in there that ha really have to do with the the whole of that mm -hmm. so i see things like that i want to see things like that and uh it's a, a a real um motivating aspect of my creating what i do mm. yeah I love that and that this notion that the painting as a visual statement mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have to live in another realm of description like in text mm -hmm. or, you know, like these are the visual statements that they are. Mm -hmm. And that is and, and there's a lot to them. I mean, yeah. there's so much that we can, you know, just sort of take in. I think we've become really accustomed to applying all of this sort of uh, uh, speak to the work, but I feel like we can do that here, mm -hmm. but then there's a line you draw where let's let's leave it in the visual to, to some degree. Um, so can we pop over to some newer stuff? Cause we're, we're, we're uh, can we look at some of the yes, stuff that was in please. the newer show? Yes. So the work's evolved and you've, you've, you've got this, these works from this other show that you just recently had. Now that I, as I said that I, uh, used the uh, collage as a a way to assemble uh, imagery for many many years, and uh, this show uh, really started before we moved over to Hudson. And as I you know took appropriated things or at least ideas I became very intrigued with Popova the Russian constructivist it was her drawings not her not her uh, paintings as much as her drawings oh there she is there she is <laughs> yeah and I've got a couple of her drawings here just so we yes can... great fantastic this is what I loved I love these drawings. And uh, so I started using some of that in earlier work, but then I uh, really focused on that as a beginning point. And, uh, and that was primarily the, the whole emphasis on my show in Great Barrington. And there's a little Kandinsky in there too. So mm -hmm. yeah. uh, here's a good example of that very, very subtle modulation where I started uh, usually a dark, a darker uh, part of it, but mix and move very slowly and only move uh, about a, a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch at a time, although my I'm covering maybe about two, two and a half inches. So it, it's building up uh, layering and it, and then it, uh, uh, it gives it a nice surface to it. Yeah, I, know, I noticed that as I got in close to some of these that there's now this pa more painterly surface to what's going on. And the modulation that you're talking about is the modulation of color that we're seeing in these very subtle gradations as you're moving through uh, in certain areas, like the bottom center of this as it radiates outward, correct? Right. Well, it, it would start really in the darkest areas. Mm -hmm. 
So as I add tint out, usually tint out, but then I would add uh, a color, very uh, small amount. And, but, you know, after many tinting and, <laughs> and adding color, yeah, you start getting a change in there. Gotcha. So that's this is how this is a good example of that. Mm -hmm. You know, when I look at these and I make the comparison to Popova's drawings, and then I think about some of the earlier works that you were doing from the funny papers, these seem like a much more distilled and refined um, usage of some of those techniques and and thought processes. Well, they definitely are. But that, that, to me, from the early, more from the days in Richmond, Virginia, when I did, I did big grid paintings, that thread and that interest has stayed with me all these years. Um, I, and it really started when I stopped using oil and uh, switched to acrylic. Um, and it's still it's still a interest to me gotcha i'm moving through these and i also want to let bill mack hold off the hook because he made a comment in there he said there's a there's the malievich aspect as well and then he said sorry didn't want to go there so i don't want to you know because i can mm. also see rodchenko um you know and others from that era that are sort of present you know like this last one you know, as we look at some of these sort of uh, linear diagonal constructions on the bottom, I think of Rochenko, you know, so there's some interesting stuff in here that all stems out from the Popova sort of interest. Um, mm -hmm. So let's see, I think, did I put this one up yet? I did. Okay, I cool. believe so. Yeah. So, um, so how do you, um, so when you're starting to think about uh, some of the newer compositions and this this way of distilling down the idea, when you're when you're taking, you know, like I'm used to seeing such a large cacophony of of elements in your pieces that are so carefully handled and put together. Now all of a sudden there's this expansiveness to some of the color, and I feel like I, if if I were painting this, I would feel a pressure to utilize that space. Your space though in these, as you sort of broaden that, is a really sophisticated play with the way some of the curved lines just subtly break that space and offer connections between you know, like one semicircular area and another and the way those colors relate. It's really quite beautiful, but do you find yourself struggling with having to hold back? No, not at all really. Uh the emphasis on the color the subtle modulation i have no idea where it's going to end uh, but it sets up a sort of a harmonious reference because it you know starts someplace and it ends someplace and it goes through all these very subtle changes but again then the idea is to contrast that you know, I work from the premise of like contrasting relationships, things that relate and can hold together and then and then contrast those, uh, but still stay within a uh, a way of assimilating into the the color structure of it. And uh, gotcha. Earlier, one of our viewers, Joseph Barbacci, was asking about the materials in these. You're working in acrylic with these, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, this is all acrylic. And do you work on one piece at a time, or are you working on multiple pieces? Yeah, I, I, I really do. Yeah. They're time-consuming, so it takes, even back when I was doing the grid, <laughs> the grid paintings, you know, that starts at a certain point and ends, and you don't really know what it's, you have an idea. Yeah, I wanted to put these some, were, I love these. These were all on paper. Mm. Now, this is the beginning of COVID, <laughs> and we were both in the studio. I'm not going to say it was upside of COVID, but it surely 
allowed time to stay in the studio mm -hmm. and uh, get both of us just got a ton of work done. Right, right. And uh, so this was, I instead of starting on camp, well, I should, I should mention though, those paintings were done before this. Right. Yeah. No, I skipped I it. I was supposed to be scheduled for a show where the gallery closed. I didn't want to break up the that whole series. I didn't want to put, you know, a few pa paintings here and a few paintings there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I just kept, uh, just put him in storage until uh, I had chance to show with the uh, uh, Carrie Chin uh, gallery in in uh, Great Barrington, beautiful gallery, and it, and it worked perfectly. Well, I'm glad I. Yeah, I jumped ahead to that image because with Terry's question about working on one piece or many pieces at a time, I thought, you know, when you see a bunch of your work together, mm -hmm. rather than going through one image at a time, it really becomes apparent to me that you're working on one piece at a time because they all have an individual distinctness yes. about them, mm -hmm. which, you know, yeah. feels like you were in that one space. Um, but now, all these paintings you're seeing here, they all came from collage early collages right wow. is this now, the, the collages show? are very small and projected uh, and they're all dark light there's no color in the collage right it's all uh, a, a dark light uh, so again the challenge becomes uh, you know how to <laughs> I don't handle that. Right. So there's the one aspect of getting the image onto the canvas, and then there's the second aspect of dealing with the color later because you don't have that from the get-go right. from the collage piece. Gotcha. Is this the show that you had? These are the images from that show? No, no, no. This show was uh, in Lake George. Gotcha. It was a very nice little gallery up uh, in Lake George. I'm sorry. I'm can't remember the name of it. No worries at all. I just, yeah. you know, my, my whole focus here was to just sort of be able to see a number of pieces like this, for example. I'm assuming this well, is... Well, that's on my wall. Right, right. Um, and these are newer pieces than the ones we were just looking at, but they offer up this idea that when you're working on one piece at a time, you know, there's, there's a unification to this, but there's also a distinctness to each individual one. And I, I kind of like the way those live like that. Well, you, yeah, each one, well, these, well, one thing, a very important thing I, I didn't mention in this is I stopped the collage, uh, and these came from just, uh, drawings. I made drawings mm -hmm. and then took the drawing, uh, well, these were drawing on paper, but the paintings themselves started as as drawings and with the influence again uh of the popova drawings right the circles and the line now my interpretation of those went off in di different directions all the time right but at least the idea uh uh remained the same Right. And like the collage pieces where you were taking elements from comic culture or popular culture at the time and sort of reinterpreting them through that projection, I feel like the Popova drawings that are influencing your drawings and then becoming paintings have another life breathed into them, just like the earlier right. works did. By the way, I'm not... <laughs> I'm off on a new series. Oh, good, good. And uh, and I don't have any pictures of those. But uh, are you going to be posting them on your Instagram? Uh, they're on my Instagram. Yes. Okay. Well, and they're they're called Redux, meaning that I've taking I've taking uh, 
snippets or or details out of old paintings and redoing that little section that little detail in into a drawing i mean a, a painting into a painting right yeah right but they're still small because we're uh, trying to build our own studio and having been a saga gotcha and, uh, so we have limited space in the rented studio space. I gotcha. If you all out there would like to follow D Jack Solomon on Instagram, you can find him at D Jack Sol Solomon on Instagram. Um, that's definitely the place to go and see his most current work. Uh, you have a website, Jack, but it's kind of the Instagram is the better place to go, correct? Yes, because I just stopped. I couldn't afford to keep putting money. I mean, putting pieces on the my website, gotcha. so it stopped uh, several years ago. I hear you, and well, Instagram is a better place. Anyway. Yeah, I agree. It's still a good place. Instagram to... is the, for updated. Yeah, uh, and, and new work is the best. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, Jack, we are at the end of our hour, and we really enjoyed seeing this work, and I really want to see more. So um, we're going to be keeping an eye on what you're up to, and if you have any shows in the future, let us know, all right? Well, I, I really enjoyed it myself, and I say hi to everyone, especially my grandkids and, and daughter. I'm sure they're out there watching you. Um, so uh so listen we'll be talking to you soon you take care and uh say hello to jeanette for us i surely will all right jack and thanks thank again. you absolutely thank, thank you. you this was an honor there's a lot of great love flowing in the chat right yes. now from people that they love the work yeah so um you know we'll be wonderful looking, yes we'll be looking out for you thanks again all jack right. we'll talk to you soon all right. thank you you got it all right so that was that was good. That was great. And we do have a lot of comments coming in. We have Susan R. Michael says it's beautiful. Joseph Barbaccio says these, these are, are hitting, hitting home. They're hitting home. Yep. Pumpkin Audrey, great conversation. Thank you, Jack and Terry and Todd. Yep. John Park says loved this work. Great conversation as well. Joseph Barbaccio says TNT Dynamite. Thanks very much. Uh, Susan Michael says fab. Mom says love Jack's work. Great show tonight. Uh, Jeanette Fintz who's over on YouTube, says, great interview, wonderful talk. Thanks, Jeanette. It's, Thank nice, to, it's nice to see you, even yes. though we're not actually seeing you. Yeah. It's, it's, nice to have you it's nice to have you here. Um, yeah, this was good. This was good. You know, you should know that when we put together our slideshows of this work and we're pulling images up and looking, we usually have between, I don't know, 100 and 100. Tonight we had 181 we images. We had a lot of images. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a lot of work to see. There's a lot of stuff that you didn't get to see. Yeah. Because we just can't get to all of it, so yes. you know, yeah. hit up hit up Jack's in Instagram and um, definitely uh, give him a look. I do think the I know the website's outdated, but I still think it's worthwhile to take a look because there's many different paintings in the archives that Jack has done throughout the years, and I think people should still check it out. And so. one thing we're going to try to do in our rebuild of this show is we're going to find a way to allow you to keep tabs on the artists that we've shown. So when an artist that we've shown from back when is going to have something coming up, we're going to be posting about that so you can get out to the gallery and see that and kind of Great. see where things have evolved to. Jack is still out there. We've got him in the green room. He's uh, we can hear him. Um, so, you know, so definitely do that. And we will. What are we doing next week? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we have something in the works. Yeah, next week kind of uh, we got thrown a curveball for next we week. We got thrown a curveball, but we do have something in the works. We're just not sure. We're scrambling. We'll be honest with you. Yeah. So um, join us next week to find out what the heck join we're doing on the large episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I definitely will. Jack's, I'm gonna be Jack, Jack's going to be there. He's going to be a follower and everybody yes. else. And that, a fan. Good. Oh. <laughs> good. We love that. Um, okay, everybody, listen. If you um, haven't followed yet and you're here watching, definitely leave us a follow. Otherwise, we will see all of you next week thanks for joining us tonight and uh cheers cheers good night everybody take care <laughs>